How to Talk to Anyone by Leo Lowndes. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel and I want to make self-growth normal. If you want to make self-growth normal because I don't want to do it alone and who doesn't want to make self-growth normal? Then make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It helps with ranking and all this other stuff and I really appreciate it because so much work goes into making these videos. I put this audiobook off for maybe three years because I never really thought it would be worth my time. Some of the reviews made me think, okay, it's probably going to be another book about social skills, mirroring, body language, tonality, maybe word choice, maybe a little listening, not interrupting, talking about the right things, steering the conversation in the right direction, a positive one, and everything along those lines. Networking tips, tips of how to build and maintain the quality of your power base. And I was worried it might be some sort of generic hodgepodge of these things. I don't know why, but for people like me who have been putting it off for so long, and maybe many more, I would like to say that all of that, it's not the case. I mean, it is, but only really in some aspects, honestly. It seems, the author says, that well-liked people have this bag of tricks, a substance that solidifies friendships, a wizardry that wins minds, and a magic that makes people fall in love with them. They also possess a quality that makes bosses want to hire them immediately, and an asset that gets customers buying from them instead of the competition. And they say that it, this book will give you 92 tricks they use every day so you can play the game to perfection and get whatever you want out of life. This sounded like kind of a more vague, dramatic version of the beginning of The Charisma Myth by Olivia Fox Cabane. Spectacular book. Should we ram through all 92 of these tricks with rapid commentary? Yes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> In the original version of this review, I was going to, but even without commentary, it ended up way, way, way too long. So I'll talk a little bit about my favorite that kind of stood out, and a little bit more. And first, I want to say something about the book that I noticed. In the beginning, the author mentions a book other than this one. It was written last century. It was my back burner book for, uh, I don't know, like a month and a half, maybe two months. I listened to it maybe 10 to 12 times in a row. It stupendously impacted the way I interact with people in a very, very short period of time as a result. Now that I had the ability to do that with the new job and all, for anyone who's like, Sam, can you just shut up and say what the book is called? How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Self-help classic, for those who don't know, it I mean, me at least, it, got, it finally got to sink my teeth into it and apply it during and after my job hunt. However, here's the part where I stop talking about me and start talking about everything else in the universe. Knowing that people are people, the more I worked where I worked before getting this job I'm about to start in Philly in a couple weeks doing straight up sales, the more I noticed that some things in that specific book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, they have become just abused in sales processes to the point where it's not easy at all to use them effectively anymore. And so in the beginning of the book, after the intro, the author explains how times have changed in this regard very clearly before lunging her way into the tricks at hand. Or, I guess, in bag. And this alone is my favorite thing about this sp book specifically. Because no other book that I know focuses on the solution of such a troubling thing in self-help. Today, that in the last, I don't know, 75, 80 years, Two, three, five years, let alone, has been caused by disruption and or technology. There's a beginning section about body language tricks, and it encourages us to pay more attention to body language in general. Of course, this would only make sense. I think number four, the one about looking like a winner wherever you go, reminded me of the book Presence by Amy Cuddy. The next section is a big one. It's about small talk, ironically. Small talk. A lot of people don't like small talk. If you don't like small talk, if you don't... What did I almost just say? If you don't like small talk, that's okay, because most smart people don't. I adored number 15, how to make where you are from sound exciting, or at least more exciting than simply the name of the town or city. I was raised in Allentown, PA, home of Dorney Park and Wildwater Kingdom. Are you a bigger fan of amusement parks or water parks? I really like the ones where the author suggests, say this instead of this. 24 is like, instead of asking, what do you do, as in your occupation, or what Brene Brown calls, you know, your identity or role in society. Instead of asking people, what do you do when you're networking or at a party, start asking, 
how do you spend most of your time? There's a huge difference between those two questions. <laughs> There's also a section about communication with insiders of other professions like scuba diving, automotive, just talking to or reading up or spending a day with or around people of that profession. It's easier to get what she called insider prices when you're shopping for anything that involves that profession. So in automotive, for example, if you're buying an engine or wheels, all the explaining and qualifying is already done to you by you beforehand. So that sales clerk's time and stress is already saved. The author calls this in the conversations. The author calls the vocabulary that you use jobbledygook. Speaking of vocabulary, there's one about replacing uninteresting words of your vocabulary, the ones that you use every single day, with unique, more colorful synonyms. This alone shines your character in a much more distinct light. I have tried it, and I promise you, you will be flabbergasted with the difference it makes. There's a full chapter about different ways to compliment someone, and a lot of this stuff makes the book seem like more of a nuanced, updated version, or maybe extension of How to Win Friends. I just, I swear you can just tell that book had so many roots in this one. Maybe I'm partially just saying that because she mentioned it in the beginning and what I was just talking about then, but I mean, after an explanation of each tip, just the way she sums them up reminded me of the way Dale Carnegie did it in How to Win Friends. And some of these tricks, however, they're just very, very sneaky. <laughs> and I don't mean that like like they're manipulative, because you're not really taking anything from the other person. <laughs> or persuading them. You're kind of just getting along better with them. How to sound close even if you're far away. How to get past a gatekeeper on a cold call. By making them think that you're friends with the VIP. Okay, I guess... In some ways you could call that one manipulative? But literally the word influence, I mean... The difference between influencing someone and manipulating them is a huge, just, other video topic. How to make someone happy that they called you. It's just like one or two things you say that are very specific and different that will set you apart drastically from, like, what you would have done if you didn't have this information in the book. Number 90, the one about getting what you want from service personnel. Whoa. Whoa! You ask for their supervisor's name, and specify, of course, beforehand that it's you're asking because, like, this personnel did a really good job. Number 91 about being a leader, not a follower, while in a crowd of followers. Some of these are just very unique. They're very heavy hitters. Some of them you might easily find in body language books or social skills books. You'll find those and even more, which... I'll recommend those books in just a minute. Quotes. Visualize anything 60 times a day and it becomes a habit. No man would listen to you talk if he didn't know it was his turn next. Don't touch a cliche with a 10-foot pole. Facts speak. Emotions shout. Practice is the fountainhead of all communication smooth moves. Direction 1. I recommend this book for anyone who thinks their communication, networking, people reading, and overall social skills could use some work and they want valuable info that can kind of fill that void maybe overrunneth the cup. Direction 2. If you like this book, I recommend checking out Presence by Amy Cuddy. Great book on your own body language. What Everybody is Saying, Everybody is Saying by Joe Navarro. Compelling book on more than anything other people's body language. And definitely Captivate by Vanessa Van Edwards. There are some lethal tips in that book. <laughs> How to Talk to Anyone by Leo Lowndes. There's a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video as well if you want to check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. Also let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it. But hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already because I don't know why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe, but if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to receive a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.